The joy continues on the Now Morning Show as we are about to enter into a discussion with a phenomenal woman. Dr. Diva, Diva rather, Amon joins us in studio, who is a marine biologist and has also topped the Caribbean Excellence Awards, among many other accomplishments. Good morning, Dr. Amon, and welcome. Good morning, Natasha. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. And thank you, because I know your schedule has to be packed. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is, but I'm so grateful for the invitation and to be here with you guys this morning and to follow in the footsteps of Bob. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bob definitely captivated all of us this morning and I know this conversation with you is going to be so captivating. So let's start at the beginning. What inspired you to become a marine biologist and what has the journey been like? Well, I feel so privileged to have grown up here yeah. at home. I mean, we have, we are so fortunate to have such incredible biodiversity here in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, growing up, the ocean was very much like my playmate, my friend. Mm -hmm. I spent hours on the beach, snorkeling, sailing. And, but it wasn't actually until much later when I went to university that I really realized that there's so much more to the ocean than what meets the eye in the shallows. Mm -hmm. And I remember I took this course at, um, in university on deep sea biology, and in the first class, the lecturer said, far less than 1%, it's actually far less than 0.001% wow. of the ocean, of the deep ocean, has ever been explored, ever seen by human eyes, ever seen with a camera. And who doesn't want to be an explorer? Exactly. Right? <laughs> so that was really the beginning, and since then, my it's really, I've moved from wanting to explore for exploration's sake mm -hmm. to really wanting to explore to understand and to conserve. Mm -hmm. And now the ocean has become something more of like a family member, something that I want to understand, respect, nurture. That is something that is so beautiful. And of course, with family comes investment. And you mentioned conservation and so much more. So let's speak about your investment when it comes to deep sea science, particularly. So, I mean, Again, I feel so lucky to be able to work in the deep sea. It's something that not a lot of people get the opportunity to do, especially people from Trinidad and Tobago yeah. and the Caribbean. Deep sea science is a very um, inaccessible science. Mm -hmm. There's, it's extremely costly because it requires high-tech equipment. And that means that most people who are able to explore the deep sea or most countries who are able to explore the deep sea are from wealthy countries yeah. or are wealthy individuals. So that means that many places like the Caribbean, like Trinidad and Tobago, we just don't have the capacity to access the deep ocean. But it is an incredible place. Mm -hmm. um, there, it's actually the largest ecosystem on the planet, providing 95% of all living space on Earth. Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, right, so that's where the majority of life is. And um, that life is so critical. It's, I think a lot of people think of the deep ocean as being dark, yes. empty, mm -hmm. scary, boring, and it's so far from, so far from. Just like on land, we have a huge amount of habitats and those habitats are home to hundreds of thousands of species, most of which have never been discovered, right? And those animals are critical to the provision of ecosystem services. They benefit you and I in many ways that we don't even realize. They regulate our climate by absorbing heat and sequestering carbon. They help to support fisheries that billions of people rely on. The deep sea is critical to life on Earth. It really is. And we need to do more to preserve it. We do need to do more to preserve it. Now, before we get to how you are doing more, I have to agree with you because I feel like, let's say at least once every two weeks, maybe three weeks, we see something pop up in the science news. This new um, species has been discovered and everybody thinks it's so fantastic, but we don't understand the depth of it and what it means for us the as a it. world. Ah, there we go. You see what I did there, right? <laughs> now, let's talk about species. You found a species. Um, when did you find found it? Find it. Found it. When did you found it? And also, um, what is the main objective of species? So before I get on species, just to t tack on to something you said about yeah. new species, I mean, I think not a lot of people, I think a lot of people think that we know everything there is yeah. to know about the planet. We've discovered all the species. But every single time that we go down into the deep sea, we find new species. Yeah. Every single time. Every and, single it's not, time. and it's not just one or two we are finding thousands of new species. I mean, really, more than two thirds of the deep ocean animals we expect species have never been discovered. Imagine so there's that. a huge amount of work to do. Yes. But mm -hmm. species, the other species. So species is an NGO that I co-founded with several friends mm -hmm. and amazing marine biologists that live here in Trinidad and Tobago. And we came together because 
we thought that so much more needs to be done yeah. locally to preserve our ocean and to really bolster research, bolster education, creating more ocean literacy and bolster advocacy. And so myself and a bunch of other experts, we founded its Species and it does a range of product, pro products, projects. Um, we work on everything from turtles to the deep ocean to corals to fisheries. Um, really, it is, it's a huge, uh, we have a huge spectrum of topics that we work on and we do this because we want to see things done better. Of okay. course, understood completely. And let's just tack off of that when you mentioned projects. I know we would have discussed off air, you've just worked on some, but you have some upcoming as well. Can we? Yeah, so we actually, that? thank you so much for asking about of that. Course. We actually have um, one which the public can actually help with. Mm -hmm. um, so this is called Turtle Spotter. It's happening right now. It's being run by my colleague, Dr. Michelle Casabon manat who is a turtle expert. And, and her and Brian Manet, her husband, and um, who are both directors, I should say, with Species. And so what this project is, is it relies on people like you. We want members of the public to tell us if they see a turtle. Whether you're down on the islands, whether you go to the beach, if you spot a turtle, you can go to our website, www.species.org, and you can log on and to Turtle Spotter and put in your report. And that information is going to help us build a really complete picture of where are the turtle hotspots in Trinidad. And in particular, we're focusing mostly on the less popular turtles. So everyone right. knows about the uh, leatherbacks, everyone knows Matura, Carve is where mm. to find them. But actually, we're looking at the species like hawksbills, greens, loggerheads, olive ridleys. Those are the turtles that we're thinking about with regards to this project. So if this is something you want to help with, we really, really appreciate it. Oh, definitely. Fantastic initiative and something that we need because we see turtles. I mean, let's be frank, we see them at most shorelines that we go to. So we need to have that involvement as well. Let's do this, guys. Now, Dr. Amon, one of your most recent recognitions is the most prestigious prize at the Anthony N. Sabga Awards for Caribbean Excellence. How does that feel for you? <laughs> Very humbling um, to be able to to be considered amongst so many people that mm -hmm. I have looked up to for so long. Um, Caribbean leaders is just such an honor. Um, I'm so grateful to the Anthony and Sabga Awards for, for creating these awards. You know, Caribbean recognition is often lacking yeah. and yet it is so full. It's the most important thing, right, as a Caribbean person. And it's so wonderful to have recognition for science yeah. um, because I think science is often undervalued here and to be able to see that is, great, is just wonderful. So thanks to the awards and thanks to everyone who supported me in getting towards that. Lots of family, friends, uh, colleagues. Absolutely phenomenal and congratulations again. Thank you. Now I want to go back to a 2020 recognition that you received as a National Geographic Emerging Explorer. What was that like and what sort of opportunities and responsibilities came from that? Oh gosh, a dream come true. <laughs> I mean, I grew up reading National Geographic. Yeah. It was what my portal to a world before the internet, right? Aging myself. And <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we're all in the same boat. <laughs> and so to really have that recognition again, dream come true. And it really has opened up so many doors. Mm -hmm. um, they've been such huge supporters of my science, of uh, my, my real efforts to mm -hmm. communicate to the public and to others. And that was really the spark, I think, that led to this series that I did with National Geographic and Disney Plus called Welcome to Earth. Disney Plus? Yeah, watch it if I'm you have not. Watch it. It's Will, Will Smith and I go down to the deep sea together, Oof. as well as to a bunch of other places. Um, and we're currently working on another series that's going to be out in July this year on National Geographic and Disney Plus. Wonderful. So for those of you who are trying to get in contact with me later, I'll be at home watching Disney Plus, <laughs> just so you know. All right, Dr. Amon, so we've discussed, I mean, you're a marine biologist, you are in television, you are an entrepreneur, founding organizations and so much more. Classic question, where do you find the time and how do you balance it? <laughs> well, if you look closely, you can see I have a lot of gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is honestly, I think, speaking very frankly, yeah. the biggest thing that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love what I do, but sometimes that I can let it consume me. Yeah. So the really important things for me and the things I'm trying to hold on to really daily are spending time with family and friends, mm -hmm. getting out into nature, hiking, um, being in the ocean. You know, these are all things that really helped, I think, as Raquel said earlier, to ground yeah. myself and really remind myself of why I do what I do and um, refill my cup. 
Definitely, and that's so important, refilling your cup so you can go out and pour, because you are definitely pouring into numerous places <laughs> and fulfilling so many people across the world as well. This is such a monumental conversation. I mean, I still, I'm just looking at everything that you've done, everything that I know you're going to do. And one of the things that sticks out to me, of course, is that we are in the throes of International Women's Month. International Women's Day is going to be on Friday. Yep. And we do have a younger generation coming up who are interested in marine biology, but don't necessarily know as a woman if that's something that they should look into. Do you have any words of advice for them? I mean, thank you so much for asking that. So absolutely, I'd say yes, do it. Mm -hmm. There is no time in history that we have needed marine scientists and conservationists more than we do now. Mm -hmm. um, it is incredibly, it can be a challenging role, but it's an incredibly rewarding one. And, you know, I, and, but I think the message shouldn't go to the young women and kids who might be watching because many of them already want to do this. Yeah. And I think where it does need to go is to the government and others. Right. Um, we, it's inspiration will only get us so far. We actually need to put in place the structures to support women from the beginning of their careers to the ends of their careers. And that means, you know, being, them being able to have better work-life balance, maternity leave, right? Mm -hmm. Them being able to ha be able to work in safe working spaces, not have just a face, which is something every woman in the room can agree, agree with, yeah. discrimination, harassment, abuse. We need to put in place the support that will take women through their careers and not just inspire them to start this career, but retain them in that career. And that is essential. That Thank you for that retaining, because that is something that many times we start off well, we go full steam ahead, and then along and then the way, things happen. And exactly. that's why also taking your advice there as well with refilling your cup, getting out to nature, hiking, and so much more. Dr. Amwan, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Natasha. It's been a pleasure. Looking forward to having you back on the show soon, because I know <laughs> that you, there are more things on the horizon for you. And I can't wait to see not just this Disney Plus series, but the next one coming out as well. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Dr. Diva Amon here with us in studio showing that anything is possible if you just believe in putting that hard work as well. We'll be back in a few moments with some entertainment on The Now Morning Show.